Welcome to the Solar API mini series. In this episode, we will give a quick overview about the Solar API's endpoint called Data Layers, which is a series of solar related data sets or raster data that you can integrate into your solar designing software in order to make your own custom solar installation models. Let's begin by reviewing some of the data sets available by using our example web app, which is linked in this video's description, and anyone can reuse the code to build a similar app in TypeScript if desired. This is the aerial imagery data set, also known as RGB, because they are the standard red, green, blue pixel-based images. This is an example of us overlaying the aerial imagery that could be from another year onto a Google map that is from 2024. You can combine aerial imagery with any of our other data layers in order to create visuals like the ones I will share. Next is called a roof mask. The mask is a model that assesses what is considered as the roof for the location specified. The visual is an example of pairing the roof mask with the aerial imagery. Next is the digital surface model, also known as DSM, which details the height of the object at any pixel in the image, like a chimney, or the height of the roof at certain points, or the height of nearby trees. And you can create a beautiful visual like this heat map by combining the DSM data with the aerial imagery and use a gorgeous palette of colors to really make it pop. Next is the hourly shade data of a location. In our demo app, we have this playing as an ongoing animation, so you can actually produce a GIF animation to see where shade gets created on the roof throughout the day or for a specific date as well. The pixels for this layer are a bit coarser than the other data sets, FYI. Then there's annual flux, and flux basically just means sunshine. This is a layer you can combine with the digital surface model and aerial and get these stunning visuals of the average behavior of the sun. The segments that are brighter white or yellow display roof segments that get the most intense sun. So this would be great spots to install solar panels to maximize energy production. You can also get as granular as monthly assessments of the sun's intensity and create animated GIFs it is a bit of math, but again, we've shared the code in case anyone wishes to reuse it. And similar to the annual flux example just before this, this shows you how the building gets the most intense sunlight during June and July, meaning that solar production would be highest in these months. And you can combine both the data layers endpoint with the building insights endpoint, which offers out of the box solar and roof details to make beautiful visuals that include where to place solar panels. And these can change dynamically based on the data a user enters about their energy or financial needs. An important thing to note is that the aerial data set is the only one that comes as a traditional image. The rest of the data sets are numeric data, which gives information about a pixel. And you can combine multiple layers and apply your desired colors in order to visualize these data on a map. Also note that the specific output of these layers are URLs of GeoTIFFs, which is a type of image file that contains numeric data mapping to each pixel of the image. Most of the GeoTIFF files are at a resolution of 10 centimeters per pixel, but the monthly sunshine file is at 50 centimeters per pixel. Hourly shade files are at one meter per pixel. But if a pixel size is specified, then that becomes the minimum resolution for the GeoTIFF files. And just note that these GeoTIFF URLs are valid for an hour and prior searches can be cached or saved for 30 days to give enough time to help with a particular solar deal. One last thing to note is that the API returns the highest quality available that meets or exceeds the quality that you requested. For example, if you requested low quality imagery, but there is high quality imagery available, it returns the high quality imagery. If you request high quality imagery, but there is only low or medium quality available, you will receive an error message. 
And if the API only has lower quality data than requested, and there is no data for that specified building or wider area, users do not get charged for making a call. And for folks who want more granular controls over what type of imagery quality is returned, there's also a field called exact quality required. This means if this field is set to true and the user requests medium quality data, then only medium quality data is returned or nothing. And that's even if there is high quality data available for that location. And there you have it, a quick walkthrough of Google's data layers endpoint in the Solar API. We look forward to seeing what beautiful things you will build for the world. Cheers. <laughs>